This here is a very cheap temperature controller. This one here is a bit more expensive and is advertised as being a PID SSR controller. But is it really using an SSR? And finally, this is my homemade version. The circuit for this is very simple. The code is well explained and in this video I will show you step by step how to make a powerful AC temperature controller. This device could measure precisely the temperature from a thermocouple, display those values on a screen, calculate a PID algorithm and control a solid state relay according to those values in order to control the power applied to a heating element. I already have a video on this topic, but that circuit got a bit complicated because it was using a trigger pulse to control a triac and at the same time I was rectifying and detecting the 50Hz AC line with optocouplers, rectifiers, comparators and so on and that made the circuit too difficult to understand for some of you guys. That's why today I will show you a basic homemade temperature controller that could work with high loads depending on the relay that you use. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by PCBWay. You should try their services for flexible PCBs. You could get the rigid flex or the totally flexible PCBs of 1 up to 8 layers. You could apply different settings such as the PCB thickness from 0.08 up to above 0.4 mm. So go to PCBWay.com and try one of their services for PCB prototype, the flexible PCBs, components assembly or the SMD stencil and their new services for injection molding, printing and CNC milling of 3D parts and laser cutting. Depending on your project, PCBWay adapts to your needs. So place your order now for prices starting from only $5. What's up my friends, welcome back. So first let me show you what these two temperature controllers have inside and how to use them. For example, this small one could be connected to 220 volts AC with the red and black wire. And then we connect the heat element onto the yellow and the other black wire. And here this is the thermocouple that is sensing the temperature. So this controller can work with 220 volts AC, so I will connect this heater. Because this is a 220 volts AC heater. I've placed the thermocouple on top of it so it could measure the temperature. As you can see, once it's powered, you can only set the temperature in degrees and it will turn the heater on and off and keep the selected temperature. When the set value is reached, it will turn off. And when we are below the set temperature, it will turn on. Simple as that. Ok, so I open it and take out the PCB so we could take a look inside. And as I thought, we have some sort of voltage regulation because the module is powered from 220 volts AC and the digital part is working at 3.3 volts DC. So to lower the voltage and get the DC value, on the PCB we have first a small rectifier then a capacitor followed by a small transformer and also a driver IC just below that. So these four elements will create around 12 volts DC from those 220 volts AC. So have that in mind, because if we want to make our own high voltage homemade controller, we would also need to do that. I can also see a small 3.3 volts linear voltage regulator and that will supply the entire digital part. We have a small microcontroller and this will read the temperature from the thermocouple, read the push buttons and control the 7 segment display. And then it will also control this small relay here. Now here is the interesting part. You see this is a coil based relay, one like this one here but a bit smaller. The way this component works is that when you apply a voltage to the internal coil, this will create a magnetic field that is powerful enough to attract the metal contact in front of it. And like that we close the circuit. But this mechanism is very slow. It can work with high frequencies and also create sparks and noise. The PID systems are working very fast. Otherwise there is no PID, just P, meaning just proportional control. And that's how this controller works. As you can see here, the thermocouple is measuring the light bulb temperature. And each time the temperature is below 30 degrees, 
the light bulb will turn on. When the temperature passes above 30 degrees, the light will turn off, and this will repeat on and on, and this is called a proportional control. That works quite good, but it will always have a small range of oscillation. So instead of a coil relay, we could use a solid state relay, also called SSR. With this component we don't have the clicking sound and no sparks. But dimming AC power is more difficult. For that just check my previous video on the zero cross detection and try a control. Basically with the SSR, if the control input is high, it will enable the output only on the zero cross of the main AC signal, which is the point where the AC voltage is passing from positive to negative or vice versa. So if I apply a PWM signal for example to the SSR, because they can't have exactly the same frequency and it's impossible to start them at the same time without a feedback, this could happen. In some cases the AC is turned on when we are at low values, and in other cases it's turned on when we are at high values, and that won't dim the power, only make it flicker. To precisely control the AC voltage, we need to first detect the zero cross and then calculate the time between the zero cross and the firing poles, applied to the relay. So please see more about this on my previous tutorial. Ok so hear me out. Using this without a feedback from the zero cross, with the light bulb, we would have a lot of flickering. But since we will control a heating element, we don't care about flickering. So what we could do is to turn the SSR fast enough to better control the temperature, because with an AC heater, which is basically a simple resistive load, we don't care about that, and the control would be very good. This might create a lot of noise, because of the fast switching of the signal. Oh and by the way, if I open the other so called PID controller, which shows that it's using an SSR, well I think this is a solid state relay, and this time the circuit is more complicated, maybe because this is also detecting the zero cross and dim the power, not just turning it on and off. Actually I've also connected this, and it's not a PID. It's just turning on and off the power as the other one, but maybe in a more controlled manner. Interesting this controller has a UART port, so maybe we could get some data out from it. Anyway let's see the part list. First thing first, to lower the voltage from 220 volts AC to 12 volts DC for the digital part, I will use this small transformer regulator. From here I can supply 12 volts directly to the Arduino, and this Arduino will run the code, control the SSR, print the data to the screen and read the push buttons. So we also need an Arduino Pro Mini because this one is smaller. 3 push buttons like these ones, 1 OLED display with an ice crazy communication to print the temperature and the set point, and an SSR module. This here for example could handle only 2 amps at 240 volts, so that is less than 500 watts. But for example, here I have my old electric heater that got broken. The heating element inside still works but the thermocouple and the temperature control got broken. This is a 2000 watts heater, so for sure we would need a more powerful SSR. For that I also have this other two. One is for 25 amps, and the other one is for 40 amps. You could also buy this with a heat dissipator. With these ones we could control more power. But anyway, I will use my controller with two of these small heaters, and this will have less than 500 watts, and this is for a future filament extruder, so in my case I will use the small relay for now. To measure the temperature I will use a K-type thermocouple and the MAC6675 amplifier to read the data. Extra components you should have are some wires, maybe an LED, some prototyping PCBs to solder everything and a case. You could make this case yourself, or maybe just download my design from below and print it. Ok so let's mount this controller and then I will explain you the code. I first decide where to place each component, and also check if everything will fit inside my case. The solid state relay is quite tall, so what I've done was to remove the screw terminals and the relay, and then I've soldered it back but flat on the PCB. In this way it will be smaller and fit better inside the case. Also a heat dissipator will definitely not fit inside this case. So get the schematic from below. 
I solder wires to the display and then I glue it inside of the case with hot glue. Then I glue the push buttons like this on the small plastic part. I also connect ground wires and a signal to each button. Now I'll use these thread insertions. I use my soldering iron and fix them in place. I add the buttons part and using some entry screws, I fix that part in place. Then I add the LED on this hole and also with a resistor and some wires. And now I solder thick wires to the transformer voltage regulator. I solder two black and two red wires. Also add some shrinking tubes for insulation and solder the output wires as well. Now I can glue this module inside of the case. Next we solder wires to the relay module. I connect the relay with the wires from the main input of 220 volts. Then we have to insulate this high voltage part and for that I will just use some electrical tape. Next I glue this inside as well. So now on top of everything I add a piece of plywood. And on top of this I will glue the Arduino and the small prototyping PCB. And from here I will make all the connections as you can see in the schematic and we have a lot of small wires. Then connect the thermocouple to the amplifier module and that's it. Now that everything is connected, get the FTDI programmer, connect it to the Pro Mini, download the code from below and upload it. So this is the code for the controller. We have three main loops. When the heater is cold and we just turn it on, we have the ramp up loop. And here the SSR will be fully turned on. And then when we get close to the desired value, we start some sort of PID control. And that will change the pulses applied to the SSR. The frequency of these pulses must be very low, because the AC signal is only 50 or 60 Hz, depending on your country. So with these lines in the code, I set that pulse to 30 Hz. When we power off the controller, we go to the cooldown loop, and here we power off the relay, but we are still monitoring the temperature. In order to detect the three push buttons, I'm using interruptions and a debounce, in order to make sure that we don't read noise. So read the code line by line for more. So now the controller is ready, I can now close the case. We have a few wires that are coming out from the controller. One is for the thermocouple. Two more are for the 220 volts AC input and the other two are for the load connection just as we have with any other commercial controller. I power my homemade controller at 220 volts from my main outlet and I add a light bulb for this test as a load, in order to see the effect and later we will add the heater. So when I power the controller, the light is always on because the set point is way higher than the real temperature and now we are into ramp mode. When I hit the thermocouple, the light will start to blink and by that it will regulate the power in the PAD mode. And if I press the middle button, I can stop the power. With the other two push buttons, I can change the temperature set point. And this value will get stored onto the EEPROM, so even if I power off the controller, when I pour it back on, we will still have the same set point value. Now I take out the light bulb and add the heater. I tape the thermocouple in contact with the heater using some captain tape. Then I power the controller and the temperature will rise. I could see that the temperature was a bit lower than the set point. So I've opened the case once again and uploaded a new code with a peak constant a bit higher. So now I have it set to 100 degrees and it seems to stay around that value a bit better. I've checked the value with my digital thermometer as well. And to change the PID values, go and check these first lines in the code and change the P, I and D values. Making good tests is quite hard without an enclosed environment and the thermocouple inside of the heater or maybe a metal block to keep a constant value. I will use this kind of controller for a future project where I will make a filament extruder and need precise temperature control. So guys, I hope that you like this project and if so, give me a like, I would really appreciate that. You have the code, the part list and the schematics on electrooms.com. 
also consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, thanks for staying with me till the end of this video. I hope that you like it and the most important part for me, I hope that you learned something new. Also, I would really like to thank to all those who are supporting this channel on Patreon. That help is very important for me. And at the same time, you have more links below if you want to check my Facebook page, my Instagram or my shop where you could buy my PCBs or maybe some t-shirts and more stuff. And with that, also support my channel. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.